Let me go back to the first vote that you cast. Inevitably, you knew I'd ask this, Ms. Burkett. Um, <laughs> uh, and that was the vote for speaker. Ms. Burkett, you uh, were one of 15 members, including a handful, not exclusively freshmen, but a handful of first-term members who decided to vote against Speaker Strauss, even though effectively, at the time the vote was taken, there was no speaker's race. Mr. Paxson, at that point, has announced he would stand down. Uh, there was a move initially to do the vote by acclamation. Mr. Berman, uh, 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 well, he had his own ideas about what he wanted to do at that point. But you made the decision, despite that, to vote against Mr. Strauss. Could you explain to this group and to the people on tape why that was? Sure, sure. Obviously, I would have preferred to vote by acclamation uh, once Ken decided not to run. Yeah. But I'd heard from numerous um, constituents in my district. I had hundreds of uh, emails, loads of phone calls, asking for a change in the speaker race. And they were very specific about what they wanted. And I just hated for my very first recorded vote in the House to be the uh, be one that went against what my constituents had requested. So this was purely about you serving your district? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm very happy to work with the speaker and I've talked with him about it a couple times. Right. Dallas Morning wrong. News, in reporting on the announcement of the House committee assignment, said that you got busted for, uh, for not voting for the speaker. Now, the, the speaker is not the kind of person you know, it's said about the speaker that he shows up for a knife fight with a butter knife. So he's not the kind of guy, <laughs> he's not the kind of guy who's going to stick it in you in, the, in an obvious way. But do you feel like you've been penalized for this? Well, I don't think so. I got one of the committees I requested, which was elections right. and criminal, uh, criminal jurisprudence. I'll be on with uh, Representative Carter. I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a very educational experience. So no I'm regrets at your, from your standpoint on that not. vote. People back home are happy that you did that. I think that. so, yes. Ms. Carter, you voted for the speaker. And then having voted for the speaker, you were promptly dropped into Greece by the North Texas Tea Party, which had, had selected you as a Tea Party approved candidate. Once you voted for the speaker, they withdrew that status. Have you lost any sleep over that? Look, Evan, Tea Party folks are my friends. I will never sit here and say that the Tea Party did not support my candidacy in a strong way. I'm grateful for all of its help, and I do believe that I'll earn its endorsement in the next election, and the reason is, we agree on so many things. Right. And Ninety-nine percent of those issues, we're on the same page, and so I. Um, but their I, definition of, a, of of an enemy is apparently somebody who disagrees with them one percent of the time. Then, because <laughs> this was one vote you cast, you cast it along with with so many other members of the house, and yet right away they said, "Well, this is enough. We're going to drop her from our list of approved folks." I wouldn't call the Tea Party enemies ever. So you, you don't consider the you, you you feel like you're still in good in a good place with the North Texas Tea Party folks. I am speaking with my friends with the North Texas Tea Party and across the district, yep. and I do think that ultimately when they look at my entire conservative voting record, they're going to be very happy. Ms. Burkett said that she made the decision to vote against the speaker because her constituents had told her that's what they wanted them, uh, they wanted her to do that on their behalf. What, why did you decide to vote for the speaker in the end? Ultimately, I pledged to him a long time ago, and I kept my word. Just about keeping your word? Yes. Now, Mr. Anderson, you won election. I, I mentioned that you won election by la less than one percentage point. You also won with less than 50 percent of the vote, if I read the numbers correct. That's correct. Um, and you uh, uh, defeated a member who had been a Republican who switched to the Democratic Party in the last few years. It's a closer district than either Ms. Burkett or Ms. Carter's district. Is that why you made the decision to support the speaker? There was no question in your mind about that? No, it, no sir. The, the, the reason that I, I chose on the floor to support the speaker, uh, we need to go back uh, to something that, that Cindy said, and that was I had heard from a large number of my constituents uh, that they wanted a change in speaker. You, you had heard that? I had, I had absolutely heard that. I went, I met with, uh, with Speaker Strauss. Uh, I let him know that this, you know, this is what I'm hearing from my district, not just from the outside groups uh, from around the state, but from within my district, and that uh, uh, I stayed, as I, I did not pledge early on. Uh, I waited until we had our caucus meeting uh, in caucus. Uh, I did not stand when we when we voted, uh, and when you did not support the I, speaker in the, in, in the in caucus, caucus vote? And, and I think that that is common knowledge. Uh, and when we went well, to well, the, it is now. Uh, uh, well, it was com <laughs> it was. I wouldn't have said it if it wasn't already common knowledge. Uh, uh, when we went to the floor and, and uh, uh, Ken withdrew, uh, I made the conscious decision to do what uh, the uh, Dallas County Republican um, 
executive committee had asked us to do is to unite behind the speaker, right. and that's what I did. I did, you know, so when I, I, I received some feedback from my district that said, hey, why did you do this on the floor? And when I explained to them, guys, it was the only, it was the only choice we had on the floor. Right, so the threats of some outside groups who said, we're gonna count this vote against you when we do a ranking of conservative bona fides next time doesn't put you off. Well, it's not that it doesn't, that, that is correct. Yeah, not worried about that, all right. Uh, it's not that I'm not worried about it, it's that I weighed the decision right. and I made the decision based on the best information available. Okay.